Morning world, welcome to Sunday 17th of September. <sighs> yeah, well, I don't know where the time's going. Um, right then, so today I've got a bit of sorting out to do. Uh, I've got to go and see Rich Cornock because we've got to organise the last details of our trip to Ireland next Wednesday. Um, weather reports out there have been less than brilliant. We hoped we were going to get a dry, dry day there, but looking at some of the video that folks have sent us, it's take a canoe, so hopefully it's going to dry up. Um, but uh, because again, as I said yesterday, because we've only got taking hand luggage, we're not taking an awful lot of luggage with us. We need to decant some wet weather gear into the vehicle of Nick, who's our local Abbey rep. He's driving over there, so uh, tomorrow. So I need to get that to him. But anyway, to, before that. I have got to go down the road, pick up a couple of bales of the hay we made down in the Harrow paddock because the guys out here are almost out of grass and the grass I want to put them on down at the bottom where we made silage isn't quite there yet. It needs another couple of days. I kind of, well, I'm hoping I can do it Tuesday, but... Um, yeah, we don't. We want a bit of sunshine and get it going. We haven't had any. Yeah, the, uh, the saw bench isn't much of a counterweight, but it's better than no counterweight, and I can't be arsed to take it off. So the idea is I'm gonna bring one, maybe two barrels a day on Sunday, so the road's a bit quieter. Um, so we'll see, well, I'm running out of time, it's, it's, 20 past nine now, and I want to be with my dad's just after 10 o'clock to go and see him for an hour, to, to then have an hour with Rich, to sort out what I do with him, to then come back and drop our stuff off with Nick um, before I come over for lunch. So yeah, busy. Let's have, let's have a couple of the headland bales, shall we? Now, 
now we've got to take our life in our hands and get it on the road like this. This is um, what we call squeaky bum um, maneuver. Last time I did this, I had a policeman stop me and give me dog treats. Do have a flashlight on? Do have a flashlight on? So just ease it there gently to give somebody half a chance to see me. So nobody come in. We're good. get all 15 bells in like this, you know, one at a time. It's one of those things, again, with the trailer, pulling out of that gateway with the trailer on, with a load on, the trailer has no choice because of the way I have to turn the road, the trailer tips. So it's just, it's just a dodgy gateway. Sunday is the best day to do it. Earlier, really, though, whenever it's still in bed. Should we give him this one straight away? Let's give him this one. A little stack man or two in there. not our best hay. Not even close to our best hay. But they're still out on the grass. They can still have some of that if they want to. And uh, I don't want to give them the best hay yet. They don't need it. Of course, my noise blood, isn't it? Forgot that. Be interesting to see how they react to this, because this is first cut. It is really long, but uh, my bet is they won't like it very much. They'll turn their nose up at it. See, it's, it's not bad. It's just not great. Mm. 
All right. All right. So, because it's because it's different, they probably will tuck into it to begin with, and then after about ten minutes, they're going to go. Yeah. Mind your backs. Come on. Pack it up. Come on. You have to move your arse. Move it. Come on, stupid. No, don't go that way. Come on. Get your head round. Go on. Get your head round. Come on. You know which other gate opens. You really are not very clever, are you? Go on. Get of it. You made that hard work. Right. We'll go and bring up a couple more bales. <sighs> and then I'm going to be dads. Come on up. Come up. No complaints yet. Yeah. Side because we know a couple of those were a bit green. Um, I'm quite happy to feed them pretty much straight away because um, although they will dry, they're never quite the same. It's no sort of fail it dry. So we get rid of those out of the way, and then the dry ones I'll either get in somewhere between now and Wednesday or I'll do it when I get back from Ireland. So it's not desperate, they're rain bales, they'll keep outside matter so we'll see I just want to make sure that um, everything's got enough food everything's happy nothing's going to want to try and escape while I'm away in Ireland right don't overtake me sorry even when you indicate on a tractor Sometimes car drivers, I don't know what it is about tractor indicators, they seem to be invisible. And car drivers are just overtake you anyway. It's like, oh, tractor, I'll overtake it. No, mate, I'm turning. I could say it's probably from folks traveling through the countryside to get from one city to another who don't understand. But um, one or two of you have noticed me um, <laughs> tamely bashing recently. And one or two of you urban dwellers <laughs> got a bit upset about it. So just take it from whence it came, all right? It's all, it's all ribbing in love. I love you all. I just love the town is a bit less than the country folk, that's all, you know. It's only because we speak the same language. But then you stay here long enough, you'll learn some of the language, and then you can talk to us, and then we can all get all the cows on fire. The question I'm going to ask myself now is, do I edit that bit out? Risky, isn't it? <coughs> what I should be doing really is nurturing the um, town and countryside bringing us closer together and saying, you know, yeah, you should come out and spend more time in the country and um, enjoy your country and appreciate your country. And if that was the case, if people did come out to enjoy and appreciate the country, I wouldn't have a problem. And I'm pretty sure most of you do. 
but there are just those few that spoil it who come out in the country and want to turn the country into the city or come out with some of the city manners that are a little bit different to the country manners. I'm not saying they're bad manners, they're just different. Different isn't always good. One more, I think, and then we will go to my dad's, and I can always bring a couple more of these this afternoon. So, so you might have a bit more of this later on. So, I might also have a bit more mole catching. My new mole traps turned up yesterday, uh, but I haven't set them because um, we got some campers out there. I think they're going today, so I'll wait till they've gone. Yeah, one of them's packing up now, actually. I'll wait till they've gone before I put the traps out there because. Somebody just went over it. You know, I'll go out and find one squashed under a tire, tire print or something. So, so yeah, one more of these. Go and say ta-da to Peter because it looks, looks like he's packing up, and then over to me dad's. That's the third time I said that now, isn't it? But I am going over to me dad's. Well, they all seem quite happy with that bail. Don't seem to be any complaints. Don't need that. Right. <laughs> the camera's just turned itself off. So, as far as I'm aware, the last trip down, I've not recorded at all. So, sorry about that. Anyway, I was saying, before the camera turned off, this is the second bail up now. I've picked another one from the headland, one that didn't look quite as nice. There's a bit of dark staining around the outside, which kind of indicates there might have been a bit of damp in it. So this is one I wouldn't want to keep. I'll, I'll feed this. Uh, oh, yeah, she's had enough. So one, of, one of the cows has decided to nah, that's not for me. I'm out of here. It just means they won't get angry. Uh, but I was also saying that uh, when I come back from Ireland next Saturday, Sunday, I thought, no, Sunday, I'll have a, I'll have a quiet day Sunday. Just if I'm tired from the trip, because there's a fair bit of travel involved uh, next week, we're going to be doing a fair few miles. Um, we're going to the circus, apparently. So, yeah, according to my missus, um, she has booked tickets for us all to go to some stunt circus, which when she originally said it, I thought, oh, God, it's been a while since I've been a circus, and it's not really, wasn't really my thing, but apparently the stunt circus is quite a lot of motorbikes. Well, motorbikes are interesting for me. I forgot there was a blinking cycle race on today. So, just gone through Charfield, and there's marshals in orange tabards everywhere with their little red flags. And now it's 15 miles an hour through the village. Okay, so I've just left Mr. Cornock. He's sitting in his kitchen for the last hour and a half, putting the water right. So I came over and grabbed his wellies, because I'm off to meet Nick from Avi Machinery this afternoon with a plastic tray um, with his wellies, I think a pair of, spare pair of jeans and some, some warm socks and my uh, spare well is waterproof trousers and bits of bobs. So basically, we're just going to put everything in a box. Uh, Nick's going to take that over to Ireland for us, which is going to save Richard and I a whole load of hassle uh, because on our flights over, we've only booked basic sort of hand luggage, nothing very. We don't need a lot. Clean underwear, pair of shoes, a couple of shirts, razor and the rest of it's probably going to be camera gear. So, um, yeah, so that's it. If it's raining and wet, which it is, and if it's muddy and slurry, which it is, we're kind of covered. 
ticked the box. So, got our tickets for the show printed out. So our entrance tickets to get into the show are done. Um, just checked our flight times. We'll be in Bristol Airport for, I think it's eight o'clock in the morning. We've got to be there on Wednesday. Our flight leaves at 10 to, or five to 10, something like that. Um, Rich booked the flights, so he's going to do the check-in because apparently we got to do the check-in online. So as he's booked the tickets, he's going to do that bit. We've got the car, the car hire sorted out. We've got the hotel sorted out. We've got everything as far as we know is organised. So Rich, Rich did the flights and the car hire, and I've done the hotels and the uh, like itinerary. So I've kind of arranged uh, where we're going, what time we're going, ish. So we've sort of done it. We've done it between us. So, um, so although we've sort of taken on bits and bobs, so we've everything's been organised between us. Everything's agreed. It's not like I said, "Oh, we're going to do this and we're we're going to do that." It's all agreed what we're going to do. Um, yeah, we're pretty much ready to go. I can't tell you how I look. I am so looking forward to this. I mean, the pair of us are pretty convinced we're going to have a good time. So, But there is one thing that both of us, particularly Richard, because he's more of a beer drinker than me, really want to do. There's one big box we want to tick, and that is we want to go to an authentic Irish pub, not full of tourists or anything else, uh, Preferably a small country pub somewhere around where we're going and have a pint of proper Guinness in a Irish country pub with local Irish country folks. So what we'll do is when we get over there and we've got ourselves settled we may well tell you where we're staying. It'll be in a shorts, shorts video or something. And then if anybody local to that area can recommend us a nice little country pub with no foreigners, okay? Apart from us, we want to be the only foreigners in that country, somewhere they don't go. Okay, so we'll come in and we'll be, um, well, yeah, foreigners, but the only ones. What? Uh, what do you want? Hey, what do you want? <coughs> what do you want, Miss Kid? <coughs> hey. Is that what you wanted? Fishy. Is that why you got fishy breath? <laughs> 